A Senate committee now investigating if the White House is using your tax money to try and oust Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Lee Zeldin also demanding the IRS trace the funds anti-Netanyahu group One Voice led by a former Obama campaign director, Jeremy Byrd. GOP Congressman Lee Zeldin joins us now to explain. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you for having me. So you remember, everybody watching at home remembers, a couple weeks ago when Netanyahu was in the United, in the United States, the White House said, well, we can't have him over because we don't want it to look like we are influencing an upcoming foreign election. What does this look like to you? Well, there is absolutely no doubt that uh, the Obama administration uh, has all sorts of individuals who are very active with his reelection effort now over in Israel trying to oust the Israeli Prime Minister uh, from One Voice and their partnership with an organization called V15 or Victory 15. Uh, they have partnered with 270 Strategies. You mentioned earlier in the program about Jeremy Bird. There's actually 16 uh, Obama campaign staffers, uh, leaders involved in that effort. And then you have other groups uh, as well. There's a group called Avinu, uh, Givat Haviva, uh, there are these progressive uh, 501c3s over there uh, actively trying to oust uh, BB in Tuesday's election. So V15, this group that is basically saying anybody but Netanyahu uh, over in Israel right now, they've got Jeremy Byrd. In 2012, Rolling Stone called Jeremy Byrd the field general of the Obama re-election effort. Are we to believe that this field general of, uh, with all these friends at the White House just stopped talking to them? No, I think it would be foolish for, uh, for anyone to buy that. Uh, yeah. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, when the president refuses to meet with the prime minister, but meanwhile his minions are racing thousands of miles overseas to influence this election. Uh, the fact of the matter is with digital ads, billboards, door-to-door, -door, phone, uh, press releases, uh, V15 has, they've partnered with One Voice and they are very actively targeting Netanyahu specifically. Uh, so any type of spin, you know, for example, I mean, some of these groups that might target Arab Israelis, um, th th this is what the Obama campaign does here in the United States. They micro-target uh, particular groups. They try to drive up turnout. They're trying to influence election to get rid of the prime minister. And Congressman, we did hear from One Voice. They just say that they are eager to cooperate with any inquiry, and after a fair examination, we are confident no wrongdoing will be found. But there are now Democrats and Republicans backing this, this inquiry to see what's up with this $350,000 in money uh, potentially influencing an election in Israel. Uh, I'll give you the last, uh, just real quick, last word, how significant that this is bipartisan. Uh, oh, I think it's, it's critically important. I mean, Senator Cruz and I sent that email, uh, the letter at the end of January, uh, but we need to follow up on it now because the answers from the Secretary of State were not sufficient. All right, Congressman Lee Zeldin, thank you very much. Thank you. I want to talk to you first about some breaking developments that are coming right now to us out of the situation going up, taking place right now in Israel. There is a Senate probe, apparently, that has launched a bipartisan probe to investigate concerns about a nonprofit agency taking government funds to try and be involved in interfering with the Israeli elections uh, set for Tuesday. What can you tell us about this probe and what do you think about the allegations? Well, we had heard the allegations uh, uh, a while back, but this probe is a permanent select subcommittee that is used for investigations in the Senate. So I'm assuming that uh, they are already on this, as the news reports read. Uh, they are uh, under the investigation right now. So it'll be interesting to see the outcome. I, I think they'll find out what's going on. Uh, this particular group apparently has ties to the White House. Uh, no direct link has been determined at this point about whether the White House has been sending operatives into Israel to be involved with interfering the upcoming in the upcoming election set for Tuesday. But the fact that if this group is uh, found to have used government grants, up to $350,000 from the State Department, that would be a real violation of ethics and raise some big concerns. Well, certainly it would. I mean, uh, the V-15, which is the, uh, uh, I guess you could call them the subca, subchapter of this group, uh, is over there trying to influence the election. And, you know, you have to look at the players in this. I mean, if you look at Mr. Byrd, 
in 2008. He was the uh, co-chair, I guess, or the vice chair of Obama's political operation, Ground Force. And in 2012, he was actually head of that. And so uh, he's now with this uh, organization over trying to recruit, uh, knock on doors, uh, get people out to vote, uh, the Palestinian uh, population mostly. And then, you know, if you look at Mr. Ginsburg, uh, he came from the Clinton White House, uh, where he was an ambassador to Morocco. And then also, uh, he was Jimmy Carter's um, Far East or Far East expert, Middle East expert. And that should give people some real confidence. This is very interesting indeed because the Prime Minister himself, uh, right now trailing in some of the polls, has been suggesting very directly that there are outside groups who have been involved in trying to unseat him. And the election remains close at this point. Uh, we will have to see um, what more unfolds as this investigation continues. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fights for his political life ahead of this week's critical elections. Sources tell Fox News a powerful Senate subcommittee has launched a bipartisan probe into an American nonprofit's efforts to oust the Israeli leader. Doug McElway live in Washington with details. Doug, what's happening here? That's right, Arthel. A source has told Fox News that the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations has begun a bipartisan investigation into an American nonprofit with very close ties to the Obama administration and its efforts to influence the outcome of the Israeli election. The investigation centers around funding by the One Voice Movement. That's a Washington-based group that has received $350,000 in recent State Department grants and until last November was headed by a veteran diplomat from the Clinton administrations. A subsidiary of One Voice is the Israel-based Victory 15 campaign, which is headed by top operatives of Obama's two White House campaigns. Both organizations are seeking the defeat of Prime Minister Netanyahu. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, when the president refuses to meet with the prime minister, but meanwhile his minions are racing thousands of miles overseas to influence this election. This is what the Obama campaign does here in the United States. They micro-target uh, particular groups. They try to drive up turnout. They're trying to influence election to get rid of the prime minister. The Obama administration, meanwhile, believes that Republicans are trying to influence the outcome of the Israeli elections, first with that invitation to Netanyahu to address a joint session of Congress, and secondly with a letter written to uh, Iran's leaders criticizing the Obama administration's efforts to hammer out a nuclear deal with Iran. Today, Secretary Kerry was asked whether that letter has actually hurt the negotiations. Well, I don't know yet. Uh, when I negotiate uh, for the first time on Sunday night with Foreign Minister Zarif, I'll have a better sense of where we are. But what I do know is that this letter was absolutely calculated directly to interfere with these negotiations. And Arthel, an important final note, no direct link has been confirmed between Obama and the anti-Netanyahu campaign in Israel, but polls have shown that a large majority of Israelis believe the administration has been interfering in the election, which is set, as you know, for this coming Tuesday. Boy, it will be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Okay, Doug McKelway, thanks a lot, Doug. And more now on that story out of Israel. We're learning a lot more about that shadowy group called Just Not BB, referring to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the upcoming elections in that country on Tuesday. As we've reported, the group has ties to former members of President Obama's administration. And we are learning some of its funding may have come from your own pocketbook, whether you like it or not. Doug McElroy joining us now with more to explain. Doug? That's, that's right, Uma. A source has told Fox News that the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations has begun a bipartisan investigation into an American nonprofit with very close ties to the Obama administration and its use of $350,000 in a State Department grant to openly campaign against Netanyahu, an activity that may have violated its tax-exempt status. The investigation centers around that grant to the One Voice Movement. That's a Washington-based group that until last November was headed by a veteran diplomat from the Clinton administrations. A subsidiary of One Voice is the Israeli-based Victory 15 campaign, which is headed by top operatives of both Obama White House campaigns. Both organizations are seeking the defeat of Prime Minister Netanyahu. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, when the president refuses to meet with the prime minister, but meanwhile his minions are racing thousands of miles overseas to influence this election. This is what the Obama campaign does here in the United States. They micro-target uh, particular groups. They try to drive up turnout. They're trying to influence election to get rid of the prime minister. 
The Obama administration, on the other hand, believes that Republicans are trying to influence the outcome of the Israeli elections, first with that invitation to Netanyahu to address a joint session of Congress, and then secondly with freshman Senator Tom Cotton's letter written to Iran's leaders criticizing the administration's efforts to hammer out a nuclear deal with Iran. Today, Secretary Kerry said he will not apologize for that letter, which was signed by 46 other Republican senators when negotiations resume on Sunday. Not on your life. I'm not going to apologize for the uh, for an unconstitutional, unthought out action by somebody who's been in the United States Senate for 60 some days. That's just inappropriate. Uh, I will explain very clearly that Congress does not have the right to change an executive agreement. Congress does not have the right to change an executive agreement. Asked about that State Department grant last January, a State Department spokesman said, and I'm quoting here, it ended before there was a declaration of an Israeli election. Uma, back to you. All right, Doug, thank you very much. Is someone tied to the Obama administration trying to block Israel's prime minister from getting reelected? A powerful Senate committee is trying to answer that question. Here's what we know. That committee has now launched a bipartisan investigation into a nonprofit group and its money. After being accused of trying to kick Benjamin Netanyahu out of, out of office, He's up for re-election this week, and a source tells Fox News the Obama administration gave that nonprofit group hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxpayer-funded grants. Doug McElway looking into this for us live in Washington. Doug, what specifically is this organization do, and who is backing it in Israel? Well, Harris, the investigation centers around a grant to the One Voice Movement. That's a Washington-based group that until last November was headed by a Clinton administration diplomat, Ambassador Mark Ginsburg. Ginsburg wrote recently in the Huffington Post, I'm quoting here, Israelis have grown weary of Netanyahu and his incessant sky-is-falling declarations. A source has told Fox News that the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations has begun a bipartisan investigation into One Voice and its use of $350,000 in a State Department grant to openly campaign against Netanyahu, an activity that may have violated its tax-exempt status. A subsidiary of One Voice is the Israel-based Victory 15 campaign, which is headed by Jeremy Byrd, a key Obama campaign strategist in 2012. Byrd flew to Israel right after President Obama criticized Netanyahu's plan to speak before Congress. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, when the president refuses to meet with the prime minister, but meanwhile his minions are racing thousands of miles overseas to influence this election. This is what the Obama campaign does here in the United States. They micro-target uh, particular groups. They try to drive up turnout. They're trying to influence election to get rid of the prime minister. Polls have shown that a large majority of Israelis believe that the Obama administration has been interfering in the election, which is set for Tuesday. Harris? Those are some strong charges. Tell me a little yeah. bit more about this organization, because, Doug, from what I'm reading, this is actually not the first time that this group or its taxpayer use of money, I should say, has come up. That's right. When the State Department was asked about this $350,000 grant back in the month of January, spokesman Jen Psaki said that the grant ended in November of 2014, before the Israeli elections were set up. The grant ended before the advent of V15. It ended before there was a declaration of an Israeli election. Um, we've seen the media reports uh, about the activities of V15, but the embassy has not provided any funds, support or direction to the group. But critics say the existence of the grant, the partisans involved in it, and its focus on defeating Netanyahu have made the Obama administration look mighty hypocritical for criticizing Republicans who they accuse of trying to influence the Israeli election. Yeah. Harris, back to you. You know, I'm a little confused because President Obama said that he wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he was here earlier this month because it was so close to his election. Yeah. But now what you're reporting is that those funds were flowing into that group pretty close to the election, at least within a few months. Uh, it is confusing, worthy of more There's questions. There's further watching, yep. All right, thank Doug, you, thank you. Candidates making their final appeals to voters ahead of the national elections on Tuesday. Israeli <coughs> Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a tough re-election fight, we're finding out. And the last polls out just before the vote show him trailing his main rival. Connor Powell has more tonight from our Middle East newsroom. Connor. Harris was just two days to go before the vote. Israel's upcoming elections have turned into a referendum on Benjamin Netanyahu. 
While the prime minister has focused his campaign on issues of security, like preventing a nuclear Iran, polls show Israelis are far more concerned with domestic issues, like the economy and the cost of housing. And they are skeptical about the prime minister's claims about Iran. And increasingly, Netanyahu's party Likud looks set to take a huge hit in its total number of seats in the Israeli Knesset, possibly even endangering the re-election of Netanyahu as prime minister. On Sunday night, conservatives held a large rally in Tel Aviv to pump up supporters. But it seems momentum is with the opposition. Labor's political chief, Isaac Herzog, has focused his campaign on change. Polls show his coalition with a narrow but steady lead over Netanyahu's. And many think Herzog could just be the next Israeli prime minister, with a platform of jump-starting the economy and mending ties with the United States. Turnout is expected to be high on Tuesday, but with the poll so close, it could be weeks before Israel's politicians form a new government and select a prime minister. Harris? Thank you very much, Connor. All right, now then there's this. The Senate committee has now launched that bipartisan investigation into the funding provided by the Obama administration to an American nonprofit group that has been actively lobbying in Israel against Netanyahu and his reelection bid on Tuesday. Let's bring in our Fox News political insiders, John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor, and Doug Schoen, former pollster for President Bill Clinton and Fox News contributor as well. Doug, I want to start sure. with you because you've got some inside information. Yeah. I mean, this group that's lobbying reportedly against Netanyahu, money flowing, how from the Obama administration particularly? Well, first, there have been grants from the State Department. We know about $350,000. But what I've told Harris is that it's a lot more. Mm. That it's in the millions of dollars has come into Israel from outside sources, principally the United States, and that what I'm hearing from people very close to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's team is that they've seen an unprecedented level of activity, funding, and bodies from outside of Israel, again, principally the United States, and candidly, with uh, Netanyahu now trailing, it's anyone's guess who wins. All right, but the money tied exactly to the Obama administration, Pat, your thoughts on that? Because what you're saying, Doug, is that there's money flowing from the U.S. into Israel. But, but where is that uh, money I, coming I, I, from, Let me clarify if I can. We know of 350,000. From that one group. From that one group. It may be money, more. Though. It That's may be payer. more. And we don't know where all the money has come from. And it will only be after the election uh, that we know the full extent of the effort. Wow. That's what I tried to say. Kind of say. like you got to pass it so you can know what's in it. Pat? Well, it's, uh, if this is true, and I believe it is, and there's more evidence of it, uh, there is an operation going on in New York uh, with a group called Amien, who it was reported in Free Beacon Express and in Politico that had uh, they have retained a group in Israel that has been long supported by the State Department to help them on a voter get out the vote effort, mm -hmm. which matches what this taxpayer money for voter 15 is doing, which was run by Jeremy Byrd, President Obama's deputy campaign manager last time. And by the way, all of the target, they claim it's nonpartisan and nonpolitical, except it targets all the anti-Netanyahu demographic groups and openly says it's doing that. Wow. The, the, the amount of money that Doug's so, talking about is other money coming in. I will tell you from my own dealings in the Carter administration, there were times, and I can't get into it, but where we helped people that were friendly to the United States. I have never heard of an effort overwhelmingly to try to take someone out, and I believe that's what the Obama administration may be right. doing. So, John, you no doubt saw earlier on Fox Report Jen Psaki, uh, who now has gotten a job promotion, but I mean, originally was with the State Department as their spokesperson and was talking about this money, and she said, well, None of it would have flowed, as Pat was suggesting, to a group's hands uh, via the State Department uh, so close to an election, that that money had been cut off. All right. We have a number of pieces to figure out what's going on here. A, there is a poisonous personal relationship between our president and the Israeli prime minister. Mm. B, we have at least five Obama former campaign staffers on the ground doing get out the vote for this victory 15 in Israel against Netanyahu. Do you have proof of that? Oh, yeah, it's been reported repeatedly. Publicly. We have the names, it was in the New York Times, pictures of the guy over there. Then we have something that didn't get sure, reported that much, 
Jeremy Byrd is the head guy mm -hmm. of the Obama. Then we have, you remember Ob uh, when Netanyahu came over here, the president wouldn't meet with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the vice president and the secretary of state, while they were in Munich three Mondays ago, met with Herzog, the leading opponent of Netanyahu, and it was reported in the Israeli press as a sort of tacit, informal, hands-on endorsement from Obama. So you add it all up, and Doug's been hearing about the money so, that he just told us about. This is something we've never seen before. It, a president of the United States personally saying, I'm going to screw over the Israeli prime minister one week before oh, the Iranian deal. He's got to get them off the table is what he's up to here. I, I want to bring in social media here. Sure. Uh, CXC says, the irony of ironies, the president consider negotiating with Assad's regime, ignores Israeli prime minister and refuses to negotiate with the U.S. Congress. Your thoughts, well, Pat? Well, my thought is, is that Netanyahu, you know, we got a lot of attacks on Netanyahu. First of all, it's just the partisanship in our society is unbelievable. Netanyahu who came here, Democrats had attacks on him. Nothing new. David, as I pointed out before, David Axelrod, uh, who was Obama's former counsel, uh, was, t was tweeting out points. They were all became Obama's talking points. The attack on Netanyahu. Meanwhile, we have this large underground operation. The answer to your question is money is fungible. The money that was given to the parent group for V15 that helped set this up and the, and the other groups, we don't know the extent of it all. But money is fungible in politics. But never have we seen, and I'm amazed, given that the committee, Democrats and Republicans, want to investigate it, that the American press has not been balancing its dealing with Netanyahu with what the administration can, 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 is doing. Doug, I don't mean to interrupt you before yeah. you go, Please. but I just want to say one thing. Why is this all happening? Yeah, it's, it's, that's what it's, it's, Diane it's Lang wants to know on Twitter. It's this why are we giving the money in the, the first Iranian place? Iranian nuclear deal. This and is power politics. Obama, Chicago style, believes you take out your enemies, you support your friends. And basically when Netanyahu went against the deal in the way he did, Obama has doubled down on taking him out. And, 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 and can we bring up along with that? Who are the two biggest critics? Netanyahu and Senator Menendez, the yeah. chief Democrat. And the right guy said the, indict the threat of indictment has been a political weapon used on him. As I said then, it's Nixon on steroids. I, We're in the unprecedented ground here. I want to remind our viewers that we have two Democrats sitting here. We because are. Because if people are tuning in, they might but be a little confused. But we're patriots first. God wow. almighty, you should Democrats. We are, Excuse we are me. Let me speak for my, you should put your country first. There exactly. This is not about partisan politics. It's about America. But Democrats come up to these guys and tell them, you're not real Democrats. That's what they say That's to them. Right.